So, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have uh, we have 12 speakers with us today. Uh, each of our speakers has uh, 20 minutes to, to present their big idea, and we have five minutes for Q&A. So, during each of our speakers, please, of course, in the chat window, uh, share any questions, comments, um, and we'll do our best to get to those as the uh, as each of our sessions uh, folds. So, 12 speakers, we have um, breaks after uh, each of our four speakers. We'll take a short break, we'll be back. Uh, of course, reminder that uh, this is the security track, uh, stage three, and uh, we have uh, workshops, round tables, as well as um, the other tracks ongoing. So um, I hope as you uh, as you come and go through the day, you'll be able to join us uh, for some very insightful speakers on, on the security track. So it, with that, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Um, we're joined by Patrick Brosi, who's the head of API governance at Amadeus. Um, Amadeus, excuse me. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Great. Um, I'll invite you to share your screen, Patrick. And uh, and I will exit the stage and uh, and we'll um, let you uh, begin. Thank you. Okay, super. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, I'm happy to to talk uh, about uh, this um, this uh, particular concept of a smart API. So, uh, smart API. What is it? Um, and how uh, could we apply this concept of smart API to travel insurance or banking industry? So um, before to speak about smart, uh, what is the definition of smart? So perhaps we can start with anti-pattern. What is not smart? So let's take take example of this little um, uh, smartphone, old one, flip phone. Are, are they data centric? Certainly not. Uh, just to exchange some text or, or message call. Simple to use. Uh, not sure neither because in fact uh, you have just a simple keyboard with a numeric keyboard, difficult to, to enter some text. Having some autonomy, uh, not really neither because you have a, uh, just a battery, but nothing uh, that, like, like sensor or uh, GPS to to help you. Uh, interactive application, well, neither neither perhaps some uh, calendar or calculator. But those are, uh, applications are not very interactive. And uh, about to some notification or notification, notification to receive some alert, uh, certainly not, not neither. So what could be the inspiration to be smart nowadays? So nowadays, uh, we can take inspiration about smart device. So smart device are smartphones, smartwatch, and other smart cars, perhaps. So are they data centric? For sure. Uh, because in fact they are here to capture some data, to store some data, to exchange data with uh, with with other systems. Are they simple to use? Uh, for sure. Huh? Imagine how many times you spent uh, during the day about uh, the, uh, about that kind of device. So do I, do I have some, are they autonomous? Uh, clearly, they have a lot of sensor. You can capture your your blood oxygenation, your your health, and and, and so on. Are they connected? Yes, they can exchange even themselves um, together uh, some data or some events between smart uh, smart smart devices. What, what about the, the application? It's the same. The application are very interactive together. They can uh, share cookies, share information, uh, and even with the, the, the browser inside or uh, via, via uh, uh, let's say uh, applications. And the most is really the, the fact to, to alert people and, and also to have a kind of smart, smart usage. So wh what about the, the, now we have this definition. So let me introduce uh, the, 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 the speaker. So my name is Patrick. Uh, I'm senior uh, expert in Amadeus in API design and data model. So today we'll see together how an, uh, an API, which should be data centric for sure, could be even smart. So uh, I'm going to get, give you an example uh, of a road trip uh, that we, we follow uh, inside Amadeus uh, every day as a challenge to build elegant and future-proof API in a minimum of time. 
So Patrick, what does it my, mean? my apologies. I, um, we're having a little bit of audio difficulty here on the back end. So I would like to uh, very kindly ask if we could take just a moment. We'd like to diagnose what we have. Uh, we're hearing uh, some feedback uh, static on audio. So if I may suggest just for a moment, let's uh, let's step off the stage for just a second here. Let's try to troubleshoot that audio, and then we'll pick back right up where we left off. So my apologies for interrupting, Patrick. We wanted to get make sure that everybody can hear us okay. Great. So while um, uh, while Patrick and the team are um, are looking to diagnose that, uh, sorry about that that little bit of static that was running in the background. Um, uh, first, wanted to, to um, uh, share a, a little bit of behind the scenes here. So a huge thank you to uh, to Dennis, to Yvonne, um, and of course uh, Miguel, who's our who's our track manager today. Uh, behind the scenes here at API Days, um, it is quite the um, quite the complexity to put on a, a, a conference. Uh, that actually looks looks fairly simple and straightforward to uh, to an audience, uh, but there are many moving parts, and so from time to time we might get a, uh, a little tiny glitch in our um, uh, in our our audio or video. So appreciate the um, uh, appreciate the patience, and I'll just be looking for a, a message here when Patrick is uh, is back and ready to go again. So um, so as, uh, as as Patrick was about to introduce, um, Patrick is going to introduce a uh, what are smart APIs and how to apply them. In, in travel and banking insurance. And so uh, this is going to be followed by uh, Tom Fairbairn uh, from uh, Solus, who's a distinguished engineer. Uh, Tom is gonna give us an introduction to external event APIs and five lessons learned uh, from implementing EDA. So that that will conclude the first uh, first of the four speakers, the first segment of our, of our morning today, um, at which time we'll take a break. It looks like our break today is a uh, it's about a 25 minute break. Uh, and then we'll pick up again uh, with another group of speakers. And so um, we'll have uh, requirements for API security and challenges and uh, followed by advanced authentication patterns at the edge. Um, so, oh, and uh, Isabel from uh, Field CTO and co-founder of 42 Front is our first speaker. Um, and so Patrick, do we have you, do we have you back again? Uh, yes, could you hear me? Oh, wonderful. Uh, the static is all clear. So my sincere apologies for interrupting, but now we have uh, we have wonderful audio now. So if um, if you'll uh, share screen, I'd like to offer you the opportunity to go uh, pick up again and uh, and I will exit the stage whenever you are ready. OK, I'm ready. Are you ready perfect. to start? Thank is you. It better? Yeah. Please. Perfect, Patrick. Thank you. OK, sorry about this uh, trouble. Uh, so let's restart. What, what does it mean about elegant, future-proof, in a minimum of time? So uh, let's take an example about uh, an API that has been recently designed for an Amadeus uh, safe travel widget, which was quite useful um, to for our client, like uh, travel agency, airlines, hotels, uh, provider, helping to double check the, the health document or health pass associated to their consumer or cost customer or guest. So uh, elegant, what does it mean? Elegant is, a, is the fact to, be, to provide a simpson, simpson, something which is simple to use, but uh, having a complex uh, functionality. Uh, in terms of uh, future proof, uh, the idea is at the beginning, it's always simple, but it's growing, growing, growing. So the idea is how could be stable uh, during the time? And then um, about the fact that, uh, how to do that in a minimum of time? In minimum of time, it means that um, basically um, you have to produce something uh, in safe methodology and so on. So let's see the API designer journey uh, together to build a, a smart API. So let's start to compare uh, the, the, the idea of a, a road trip between a smart device to compare the smart device and the smart API. So the smart device uh, has been uh, defined as a data centric. Um, simple to use, having uh, autonomy, uh, connected, interactive, and be able to send notifications. So what about this, those features uh, uh, for smart API? So today, uh, data-centric means uh, resource-oriented in, in, in concept of REST. And in concept of REST, we have also uh, the feature to, be, to have a state of the resource, and having some potentially some controllers to manipulate this resource and then uh, to use the, the state of the art, which is hypermedia in the Richardson maturity, maturity model level three. So, uh, and the, after that, uh, what are the next steps is to have code back or web, webhook 
uh, to, to receive some event and potentially the next generation of API will be not only to manipulate data, receive event, but also send event. So let's see together what does it mean. So resource oriented. Resource oriented is something that you certainly know as a developer, uh, historically, uh, the, the, the move, the, the change of the mindset between pro procedural and oriented object. So how uh, developer uh, moved from the concept of procedural to oriented object. Take uh, an example of some functionality, uh, like verify uh, travel condition, valid that uh, document, uh, uh, verify the path. So here you see in the, 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 the function, you have the, the functionality, the data, but between the functionality, function name and the parameter, you, it's difficult to dis distinguish it. So, so what, what are the ne next step? Uh, the, the developer decided to design uh, or code the software no more in C, but now in Java or C++, which, has, which are oriented object uh, programming language. And those allow you to distinguish uh, clearly the data and the functionality. And this mindset is something that will change between SOAP XML and RESGSON. So now we are really data centric. So Let's see via, via the example of, of a safe travel API, how uh, those uh, resource oriented approach will uh, become, will start from static to dynamic. So uh, we have this widget, which is connected to an Amadeus uh, travel backend. And even this backend is connected to a third party uh, system to do the verification of the health document because we don't have the authorization ourselves to validate that, that, that kind of document like else pass. So the idea, the idea is a uh, way to, to have a resource, for example, a third party verification, which is a resource having a status. And this, uh, this resource will have a state and let an example with the HTTP method to create this resource. So we'll create a, a third party verification on top of the else document. And uh, this, uh, this API will be connected to the third party uh, via a third party API. So basically, we start the, the verification process. The verification process is ongoing, and something will work in background to upload or, or, or upload a document or scan a QR code. So after that, we receive a response from the extension. So basically, now if you look again to your uh, else. Uh, as documents sort party verification. Now you have an ID that has been returned in the previous post. Now you can visualize what is the status of this sort party verification. And uh, you can see a state. And the state has been changed, the status has been changed between the two uh, the, the, during the flow. And this is the, the concept of state, which is very important in REST APIs. So uh, we have a resource, we, and now we have for each resource a state to visualize the evolution of. Of the resources. Historically, uh, people are thinking about verb uh, to manipulate things. How to handle that with the concept of resource oriented? So historically, HTTP methods like get, post, uh, delete was what we call crude operation. Crude, crude for create, read, update, delete. So basically, the simple things that you can do, the basic things that you can do is to manipulate resources. But what we can do more? How to handle uh, such a complex process like verify? How to create a verify things? And as you see just before, uh, we create a specific resource which is called verification. And this resource is a kind of sub resource as a process attached to, to uh, the main resource which is a else pass or, uh, or else document. And this controller uh, is uh, another resource having uh, an ID also that you can touch, you can manipulate, and it will become a sub resource. At the end, uh, you can visualize this as a kind of a, a job, and you visualize the job running on top of the resource. It could be a kind of microservice interface. So let's continue step by step the road trip, uh, as we see with the smartphone, uh, the concept of uh, connected. We are connected. How to connect things? And in fact, the idea is also to connect resources. And let's continue with this idea of uh, the fact you upload some document to be verified on the widget. 
So basically, yeah, as you see, we, we start the, the verification process, and this verifi 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 sorry, verification process will help you to upload some documents and potentially to do some analysis in background. So the status of the verification is ongoing. But after a specific uh, process, um, the system or the, the verification process uh, will have some issue and will ask you to uh, do to upload another document or upload a new a more recent document. So in that case, we can provide a link to another API, which is a post on a verification ID, so the previous uh, resource, so you are attached to the verification, verification process, and we ask the user a next step to upload uh, some document. So for example, a specific document type, which is a COVID-19 test with a specific valid duration. So here, you can see that potentially the, the, the resource verification will be linked to another uh, another resource, which is the fact to upload some document and it's described by via hypermedia a link uh, that we can discover in the A2S concept. Based on that, uh, we discover the hypermedia concept and uh, you remember uh, during the verification with Evernheim, we, we, we delegated uh, the verification to a third party. But how this OK is arriving? How, how to define the fact that I need to update a resource that I created and this update will be done by another party? And for that, we have the concept of webhook or more callback in your open API specification document that uh, basically could help you to describe the way to interact also with the resource by sending event to this resource in asynchronous manner. And for that, we define another uh, Swagger file, which allow to manipulate this third party verification uh, process with the fact to receive some specific event from this company. So this is a, again a sub resource as a, that allow to receive su, su, some event. And basically, we we'll define some dedicated endpoint related to the verification process. So this is the, the one of the most advanced concepts that you can have. And what, what is the ultimate concept is the fact to have asynchronous uh, API. So this is the future generation of, uh, of a resource. Basically, for example, if you continue with this idea of a widget, where well, you'll be able to, to validate document, but potentially the, the, the condition, the travel condition will change. And you, the system will be, we have some API inside Abelius to get uh, the duty of care uh, related to the disease and to get some travel condition for the country or for the city or for the region. So how to be, get notification for this, for an evolution of this resource. And this is, this is something that we can think about it uh, in the future that will put in place a concept of a, a specific controller where you can subscribe to monitor the evolution of this report. And potentially, behind the scene, uh, the fact to monitor the evolution of this resource will uh, provide you some SMS or email or application messages. So, yes, the concept of async API could be a solution for that to basically provide both the fact to receive some event or also to send some event. So basically, the two the two worlds will be connected: asynchronous API and open API. So uh, how to uh, consider that we can uh, provide also smart API in insurance or payment industry? So let's come back to the, um, the journey of the API designer. So uh, let me give you another illustration about asynchronous controllers. So here the idea will, to show, will be to show you how uh, an asynchronous uh, controller will help the 3D secure uh, validation during the payment process. So this is my proposal, how to do a little um, roundabout to see how to do a specific kind of controller that will be able to update asynchronously, asynchronously a resource. So this time, uh, I, I will take uh, the file that will create a travel order where we will be able to attach some insurance offer. So let's imagine that we create an insurance offer, an insurance offer will contain the insurance detail product, the term and condition, the price, and this insurance offer will be attached to a traveler order. So when you attach uh, an offer to, to, to an order, at one time you need to, provide, to ask some payment or payment authorization first. So imagine that you have now a controller which is called authorization. And this authorization will be created. And uh, this authorization will tell you that you created a payment record 
and this payment record will be attached to your travel order. So basically, the job of the controller is finished, and now uh, you, uh, you will see that you have a link of the payment order, and you can manipulate this pay payment order, and you can, you can visualize the state of this payment order, which is attached to your travel order. So the payment record uh, will have a status, and basically you can even use, um, it will be uh, at attached to the, to the travel order, and you can visualize it uh, directly with a specific ID. So you will see that potentially the payment record has been created, but for the moment, the state of this payment record is not completed, uh, because of course there is a, this, uh, interaction with the user to do some, um, to do some, to do some uh, uh, 3D secure validation. So the idea is now to visualize step by step the state of this of this record. At one period of time, you will consider that now the state uh, of, the, of the payment is finished and you are in OK status. So now we, we have finished the payment uh, attached to the insurance that we, 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 we sell with uh, via the travel order. So we start the QA session. So let me conclude uh, quickly. Uh, basically, the, the concept of the secret of the design of Smart API, you have to be data centric first to use the, the maximum of REST concept to have a state and to manipulate the state, and uh, having some controllers to manipulate uh, the state of those resources in a chirurgical manner. And step by step, you can also use some advanced con concept like hypermedia or hyper schema and around your API to give some relationship to other resources. And the ultimate will be the webhook and asynchronous API. So this is, uh, let, let's say, a summary of the modularity that is very important when you design API uh, inside uh, to be elegant uh, at, at, at the end. Uh, at, at the end. Sorry for the speed up, I have a technical issue in the middle, so I have to speed up a little bit uh, at the end. I hope the message was clear and now you will see together how to design smart APIs. So we are ready for questions if you have yeah. yeah, Patrick, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, as Patrick mentioned, please do uh, share questions in the chat. Um, we have a few minutes here to, to finish up and, and Patrick, before you leave, we'll share your contact information again so that those who, uh, who wish to follow up can do so. Um, one question I'd like to I'd like to explore just a little bit. Uh, being a security uh, professional myself, um, what what do you suggest security or infrastructure teams uh, need to understand about the controls? What adjustments should they be making? So if the developers are are, are undertaking the smart API paradigm, um, what changes need to be made on the security side? Are there new risk exposures uh, of the of the of the, the, the smart API concept? No, no, the smart API concept is with the, the, the design approach. After that, uh, the fact to have some resources which are just the state of the job is exactly as a, as, as a standalone data. Uh, you apply exactly the same kind of security with your API gateway and so on. There is no, uh, let's say, a, a specific uh, security hole in, in, in the idea. It's just a, a new way of thinking, or let's say, to adapt our way of thinking to be uh, resource oriented systematically, even for some uh, functionality which are complex. That's uh, but, music uh, to my ears, Patrick. Thank you. Um, and so, do you do you recommend any um, any resources for uh, developer education, training, standards um, that would be useful for somebody who uh, who wants to per, sort of explore this, uh, this 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 design approach further? Mm -hmm. I think. Thank you to, to to ask this question. Basically, it will be my next. Uh, my next talk, certainly in next API days, it will be the design approach. And uh, to be honest, if I could recommend is way to look about some books like uh, domain, um, domain driven design, which help you to organize uh, your design uh, in, a, in, in a new way of thinking, uh, which is to focus on your data before the functionality. So yes, to check that kind of book, what we call DDD, which is a methodology uh, that has been uh, defined in year 2000. And uh, this is uh, something which is interesting during the design to be a uh, domain design driven, domain driven design, sorry. Great, Patrick, if you wouldn't mind sharing that in, uh, in our, our private chat window, I'll make sure I post that to the, to the stage so everybody can see uh, the reference there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Patrick, our, our apologies for the, uh, the, the audio glitch we had there, a little bit of static, I'm glad we got to be uh, back on track. 
Um, it's been a pleasure to have you with us today, Patrick. Thank you so much, yeah. um, and uh, and have a great day. It's a live, it's a re 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 real life, no problem. It's happened every yeah, day, so no, no problem with that. And we are able to handle it. Very good. Thank you. So I appreciate this call. Thank you. And um, see you soon. And uh, we continue to watch also your, your other talks. Thank you. Great. Have a nice Thank day. You, Patrick.